Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharatiya, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk, which was supposed to be recorded at KubeCon and CloudedCon EU in Valencia, but due to supply changes, I had to return back earlier, so we are unfortunately doing it remotely uh, <laughs> via internet. And today we have with us once again, Shahar Fogel, CEO of Rookout. Shahar, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. Great to be here and thank you for inviting me again. What was your experience at the event? So I think the event was awesome. You know, generally speaking, I love events and I love meeting people and, you know, the market and uh, fellow vendors and also potential customers and kind of everyone who is involved in, in what we're doing. Uh, I was in L.A. as well, in KubeCon North, North America, and this this one felt like uh, KubeCon on steroids, you know, much more uh, 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 attendance and many more people, um, you know, a, a lot of people came in and walked through the booth and, and the, the lectures were was great as well. You know, big kudos to CNCF for the organization and everything they, they brought in. Uh, now let's just talk about uh, some technical aspect, of course, the event was awesome. But what do you think about the crowd? Because when we look at Kubernetes, we look at the pure, you know, DevOps, you know, uh, crowd. You know, we have operators, we have developers. Um, what was your experience? I think kind of compared to previous years, even 2019 and and before, uh, I think we've, we're starting to see a shift in the type of people and the type of persona that are coming to the CNCF events. Um, many more developers and engineers are coming. Uh, I think, you know, since kind of the world is shifting left and we're seeing also kind of in the last two, three years, a lot of effort has been put in uh, developing software and, and new companies that are targeted as, at the ops people or, or, you know, this is Kubernetes. Uh, we need to manage it. We need to deploy it. Uh, we need to make sure that, you know, the new applications are running in productions in production. So, you know, we're kind of there and, and uh, the pain is, uh, is getting closer and closer to the engineers as well, who needs to understand what they're deploying, needs to understand how it's operating. They need to understand how it's impacting their application. Uh, so I think kind of at, spe specifically for Rookout, but also, you know, generally speaking, you know, we've seen many more uh, kind of core engineers rather than kind of in the old times, more ops people or SREs coming to the event. So, you know, for us, it was amazing. What I also want to understand from you is uh, what about the major themes that you saw this year? Uh, there was a huge gap last, you know, 2019. We started to hear a lot about security, observability. Uh, so from Rookout's perspective, what did you see? So I, I think we're seeing a mix of everything. Uh, as, as I mentioned, kind of the last few years have been, uh, uh, been focused on, you know, bringing, building the applications and bringing them to production in terms of everything needs to be done until then. And now we're in day two. And what's happened, what happens in day two when applications, even in big enterprises, are cloud native, are distributed, are coming to production, who needs to care about it? So we're seeing a lot more, you know, security. Let's not even calling it people because security is also shifting left. So engineers cares about security and how, uh, you know, variety of vendors, even the observability vendors can help them. Uh, we're seeing a lot of them care about uh, observability as core, just understanding the infrastructure, but not only that, but kind of the, the next step of it, of how to get to the root cause faster, how to uh, reduce uh, mean time to resolution or mean time to knowledge about what's really happening out there, how to get the data they need in an agile manner, in a quick manner, in a you know, uh, responsive manner that is suitable for the way engineers work. So, you know, there's many more questions and, and kind of that, that takes into account the fact that engineers are really working with applications and production rather, just, rather than just uh, developing the software. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a much wider span of questions that we've seen. Excellent. And as you're saying, because of shift left movement going on, things are moving more towards uh, devs. But when we look at day two, day two seems more or less like operator's problem. If I'm not wrong, ops problem. That's where the manage, management updating, keep it running, comes into play. But as we, you know, the roles are shifting, roles are switching. So, so talk about number one is that, you know, what does day two mean for, of course, developers? Number two is that the role of observability there, because once again, things are shifting left. It is moving to developers pipeline. And the third would be, uh, it's, I don't want to make it too complicated, but um, 
what is the importance of observability in today's world? Because getting an application up and running is fine, but as you said, day two is where it actually matters. Exactly. So, so a lot of questions. I will try to tackle it, uh, kind of from my perspective, and, and touch upon the pon- points that you've asked. So, you know, yes, day two is uh, is uh, perceived as an ops problem or an ops uh, world, but um, especially as kind of uh, the paradigm of how you develop software has fundamentally changed, not only in the way that it's distributed, but you know, in considerations around uh, uh, performance and RAM and CPU and the fact that, it, you know, the old notion of it works on my machine doesn't even exist anymore. You know, even, you know, staging, QA, pre-production environment, everything is distributed. For engineers, the, the ability to work there is kind of almost, you know, technology-wise is very similar to uh, to work in production. So it brings in a few challenges, major challenges. One is, you know, if we're looking all the way to the end to production, uh, still the majority, you know, the majority of critical issues, and I'm not talking about uh, infrastructure issues that, you know, uh, every, all the ops people or SREs are looking at the nice dashboard, everything is green, nothing is on fire, cool, we're happy. If something is red, they have the possibility to roll back and do things and experiment. Yeah, they have logging and, uh, and observability tools, metric traces. They have the data that they need. But the majority of cases, it doesn't solve the issue. And when the issue is uh, is the business logic, it goes back to engineers, like tier three, tier four support, and then they hit a wall because they don't have the right tools to do that. And they need to add logs and add metrics and deploy the software again and again and again, or to reproduce it to closer environments and copy databases and, you know, the whole story that we know uh, from you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, it's the same. And, you know, software development has changed and the way you, uh, you do issue resolution has not changed. So, you know, they need the right tool. So eventually day two is also an issue for uh, enterprises and for engineers themselves, because, you know, every minute, second, hour, whatever of downtime, when I say downtime, it's not necessarily, you know, everything crashed, uh, the machines are not working, uh, it's dead. That's kind of the news type of, uh, of incidents. The day-to-day incidents, is something is not working or something is not uh, uh, behaving as expected, this button is not performing, people cannot, uh, 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 you know, um, do whatever they need to do. The small logical things, which, you know, uh, business is still screaming at product and engineering. Fix it, fix it quick. I have a, you know, I have an upsell. I have a renewal. Uh, this client, uh, I have an SLA with them, and they need to deal with it. Uh, and that's kind of the the main uh, impact that you know, Kubernetes, containers, serverless, all these new architectures, the cloud native architectures, brings into engineers. So that's one. Secondly, as I mentioned before, it's kind of the day to day because you know, it's not that you write software, deploy it, forget about it. Uh, and fix bugs whenever you want. It's continuing to to uh, to develop the software, and as I mentioned, you know, pre-production, staging, uh, dev environments are also distributed, and for for engineers as well. Every time they need to, de- you know, understand something, they need to redeploy and redeploy and add logs and add metrics and this whole cycle. That every time is like twenty minutes. I push the PR, go deploy and and wait and go for coffee and come back. You know, the challenges there are the same. So. You know, it's across the board, across the software development life cycle. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for uh, explaining that in such depth and detail. Thank you for, uh, you know, kind of tackling all the questions that I asked there. Now, uh, let's talk about, did you make any announcement at the event? So we didn't make any uh, big announcements uh, during KubeCon. We did we did make an announcement about uh, a couple of months ago around serverless experience. Uh, we've added the, the capability, which we had before, uh, to debug serverless uh, uh, environments and serverless architectures, uh, and we added a specific experience, a visual experience for engineers to do so. Uh, we've added a lot of you know small features, but the impactful around the experience uh, of de- debugging and understanding uh, cloud native applications, how to slice and dice them, how to um, actually get the data you need. Um, so you know, there's a lot of uh, incremental changes in the product that bring significant impact uh, at the end of it. And if I'm not wrong, recently you folks also announced a new feature, Auto Fetch, in collaboration or partnership with 
uh, GitLab, which is, you know, once again, focused on developers. So first of all, tell us, you know, what is this auto fetch feature all about? What does it do? So, you know, we've been working for, for years with uh, a lot of developers, teams, enterprises of, on understanding how engineers uh, work or interact with their application in remote environments. And one of the key pains that we've seen is that, you know, they don't really know which version of code or which revision is actually running in remote environments. Even in dev, but specifically in production, you know, today it's just, you have clients that it's just their application distributed across 10 or 20,000 instances, and not all of them are running the same version of the application. Uh, so when, when give, we give them the ability to access the remote environments and understand what's going on there, we also built a, a pretty you know, big engine uh, behind the scene in the back end to, to give them the ability in a simple and seamless way to you know, either choose the revision of code and then we give them uh, you know, a list of, uh, of the actual pods or inst instances or servers that are running the same version or vice versa. They can select, you know, I want this environment, I want prod, I want uh, you know, North America too, whatever. And then uh, we automatically fetch the right source code that is running on that environment. That way, you know, there's no misconfigurations or, or misalignment between, you know, where they want to bring the data and what's actually running. So it gives them kind of a much better and seamless experience in interacting with uh, distributed applications. This was the first KubeCon of the year and, you know, the North American edition is also coming up. Uh, of course, we're pretty sure that we'll see each other there. But if I ask, you know, uh, what kind of things you are seeing where the community is moving? We did touch upon some of those where you'll say, hey, at this cube go on, this is something that we should expect or this is what I will be looking forward to. So I think kind of uh, in our prisma or, or looking through our uh, glasses, I think observability is, uh, you know, is, is, is a key thing. Of course, security, but, you know, we know that in our prisma, observability is something that is uh, constantly growing and, and you know the pain is increasing and also the amount of vendors and, and new ideas and, and new companies that are big companies by the way that are formed to help uh, engineers in their day to day. Uh, I think kind of the the combination of as we mentioned, you know, shift left, the need for engineers, the ever increasing pain and the applications that are coming to production will, you know, enhance the need for tools like Rookout or, or any other of the, you know, cloud native observability tools out there. Uh, and we we're, we'll see kind of more momentum in, uh, in companies that are targeting uh, engineers rather than uh, ops, kind of classical ops people. Shahar, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about uh, the focus, which is shifting towards, of course, developers, how, you know, you folks are helping them of course, with your observability solutions. In general, I'll share insights about the overall market. So thanks for those insights. As I said, I wish we could have done it in person, but certainly we'll do it next time. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for inviting me. And as always, it's been a pleasure.